Welcome back to Tech Yes City. <laughs> Boom. They have been tested. The FX8320 and the i5-4670K. Now, people have been telling me, Brian, there is not much a difference between these two. And then some people have said, Brian, there's a difference between these two. And then people have said, look, man, just test them. Brian, can you test these two CPUs and just tell me the lowdown, tell me the bottom line? And that's exactly what I did. I said, fuck it. You know, everyone's been, I've been arguing this and a lot of other channels have been arguing this debate for a long time. And I figured, look, I'm just going to buy them both. Well, I've already got the 4670 guys. I'm going to buy an FX8320, and if it's better, I'm going to use it for my main rig. So I figured, hey, I'm going to test it and put it up against the Intel. And as you guys know, I don't like Intel, and I don't like AMD. So whoever wins, wins. Anyway, this, is, this, first, this video is going to be the precursor video in which I'm going to explain the test bed uh, the test set setups used for both the rigs. I'm also going to be explaining the games that will, will that were tested and that will be shown in the next video. And also at the end of the video, I will make a quick recommendation for you guys that can't wait. So I know a lot of you guys are subbed and you're waiting for this video. And I'll make a quick recommendation for the guys who are waiting to buy a gaming PC. So before we move into the specifics on the AMD and the Intel rig, let's look at the parts and settings that were used in both the rigs. So first off, we had the graphics card, which was the most important part besides the, uh, the CPUs themselves. This is the GDX 780 Lightning Edition. Now, I didn't just leave this thing at stock settings. I pushed this thing to the max that it can go. I put 205 on the core, and I put 202 on the memory, and I also gave it a 49 millivolt um, overvolt. So these settings were pretty much my sweet spot. This is where my card likes to run at. It does chew a lot more power over a standard GDX 780. However, it also gets better, a lot better frame rates over a standard GDX 780 as well. If one graphics card was going to push these CPUs to the limit, it was this graphics card. Now let's look at the, the RAM. We used two uh, four gigabyte sticks of memory in dual channel configuration. This was done at the same speeds on both rigs. 1866 on the memory, we used 9, 10, 9, and 30 on the timings with a command rate of 2T. Now, also for the SSD, we used a 240GB SSD from Intel, a fresh install of Windows 7 64-bit uh, service pack 1 with both the hotfixes applied on the AMD. Now, let's look at the power supply. We used an Antec Earthwatt 650 watt power supply. This is a bronze rated power supply and it has an ample amount of 12 uh, amps on the 12 volt rail. Now, also, this power supply managed to handle both these rigs absolutely fine and then some. So, good power supply. I think it's really indicative of a good value for money power supply too for the real world. So, for the monitors, we used a 1080p 120 hertz Samsung panel for testing at 1080p and then for 1440p testing, we used a Yamaha. 27 inch. Now let's move on now to the AMD test set, uh, test bench setup. So for the AMD specifically, we used the FX8320 on an MSI 990FXA GD65 motherboard. Now also for the fan, the cooler, we used a Zalman CPNS 14X cooler. This is a huge cooler and it managed to do an ample fine job of cooling the FX8320 at 4.4 gig. Now that's exactly that. We had the speed set to 4.4 gig at 1.43 volt and also the CPU north bridge voltage was set to 1.25 volt and also the north bridge voltage itself was set to 1.15 volt. Now for the actual hype, I think the HT transport speed or the north bridge, well the FS bus was left at 200 megahertz and also the HT speed was set to a multiplier of 12 which left it at 2400 megahertz now the HTT link speed was set to 2600 megahertz I found this to be the sweet spot at 4.4 I wanted to give the AMD rig the best 4.4 gig overclock I could give it now also the BIOS was updated to the latest latest BIOS it was um, updated to 20.2 and it was the whole rig was running amp uh, really well also one thing we also managed to do was to test for scaling as well so we upped this to 4.6 gigs and we managed to get the scaling so the frame rates did go up a little bit uh, when we when we tested it at 4.6 gigs this means that our 4.4 gig overclock was stable so we also did manage to test it uh, I also managed to test it at 4 gigs and it was running fine as well so the overclock was solid and it was 100% stable now let's move on now to the 
Intel rig. So for the Intel, we had the 4670K on an MSI Z87 G45 gaming motherboard. Now, this motherboard has um, basically had the NIC up blow, it blow out in a lightning storm. So I was using this piece of crap here. This is a Broadcom 2007 PCI Express NIC. This was one of the first PCI Express NICs to be released. So instead of using my Intel NIC, uh, I wanted to actually use this uh, because the Realtek NIC on the AMD motherboard is not that good either. So anyway, uh, let's move on now to the overclock on the Intel. So basically it's using an Animax T40, uh, which is cooling and amplifying as well. It was tested at 4.2 gigahertz at 1.12 volts on the core. Now the uncore ratio was set to 4100 or 4.1 gigahertz and that was at 1.095 volt. Uh, so that was both the rigs there. That's both the test setups. And let's look at the games now that we looked. So let's look at the first off. I tested single player games. I tested multiplayer games. Also did some rendering benchmarks, some streaming benchmarks. And I've also done some idle uh, power consumption con uh, sort of uh, calculations for you guys as well. Let's look at the single player games though first. The single player games that were tested were Battlefield 4. Uh, this was done at the test range at 1080p, so all games were tested at 1080p and 1440p. Uh, next game we tested at single player was Skyrim. And then the next game we tested was Bioshock Infinite. And then after that we tested Armor 3, and then tested Crisis 3, and then Batman Arkham Asylum. All games were pretty much set to Ultra and the max settings they could go. Uh, now, for also for the multiplayer benchmarks, we tested Battlefield 4. Sorry, the single player benchmarks were all done 25 seconds at three times. Uh, there was practically no variance between any of the benchmarks, as it's very easy to replicate the same conditions on single player. Now, for multiplayer, we tested 200 second benchmarks three times at both 1080p and 1440p and as you guys know this was this took a long time for me to do so battlefield 4 was tested on lang kang dam which i love this map it's one of my favorite maps um and we tested this at 1080p and 1440p we also tested star wars the old republic and this was done at 1080p and 1440p we also tested heroes of new earth at 1080p and 1440p uh, on the same map same character and then we tested StarCraft 2, and this was done on the same map with the same race, Terran, with pretty much the same conditions. And then lastly, I tested Planetside 2 due to popular demand. A lot of people were demanding me to test this game. So I test this basically at the base, just running around shooting, and it was a consistent... I wanted the benchmarks to be consistent on both rigs both the time. Now also for rendering tests and unzip, we did an unzip test and a rendering test. I did a Premiere Pro 6. I rendered a video. Uh, it was wasn't that big. I think it was a 2 minute and 14 video, 2 minutes 14 second video at 1080p and it was done in the same settings on both rigs and then for the unzipping we unzipped an 8 gig file with Win WinRAR and also for the we did Unigine Valley for a synthetic sort of gaming benchmark. Okay, lastly we had streaming benchmarks and now these were done across two different games so we tested Battlefield 4 and Heroes of New Earth. Both games were done with me playing at 1440p uh, downscaling it through DxTory to 1080p at 30 frames per second on the lowest rendering codec in the DxTory codec. As you guys know, YouTube also uses the YUMV12 codec as well, I think it is. So this was done and it was scaled down to 1080p. Now we used Fraps on top of that. So we used we used DxStory to connect to OBS and then we used Fraps on top of that to count the frame rates. Uh, and basically this was done, yeah, via both on Heroes New Earth and Battlefield 4. And why just these two games? Because these are the two games that I would honestly like to start streaming in the future for you guys maybe with a live giveaway or something like that. So I decided to test these two games. Uh, streaming wasn't that important to me either, so I only tested two games here. Uh, anyway, let's move on now to the last part. This is the recommendations. Now, people, if you are wanting to get a CPU, basically I'm going to tell you guys cut and dry, okay? 
The Intel, if you are going for something like a GDX 770 overclock, or something or an R9 280X or an R9 290, something that is a pretty much a high-end graphics card, you will want to get the i5 4670K and you will want to overclock it because some of these games that were CPU bound, there were significant differences and I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not going to bullshit to you, there were some significant differences and you'll see them in the benchmarks to come. Um, the 8320, honestly, it is good value for money. If you, I've, seen, I've recommended it in the past for $130. Sometimes it's extraordinary value for money. It comes with a really decent heat sink as well. I think this this CPU coupled with a 970 motherboard that's on sale as well. Maybe you can get one of them for 50. I've seen them go for 50 or 60 dollars. Clock it to four gigs on the stock cooler and you'll be home and hose. That's really good value for money. Couple it with a mid-range graphics card and you'll be getting good performance for the dollar. So honestly, uh, some you know, why wouldn't you recommend this on a high-end graphics card? Well, if you're spending like 500 bucks on a graphics card, some in some games, this gave a 50% increase in frames. I'm, I shit you not. I was just blown away in some games. No bullshit aside, on Armor 3, specifically I'll mention Armor 3, there was a 50% increase in frames, just the CPU alone, which was huge. So what's an extra 100 bucks if you're going to miss out in some games on a significant amount of frames? So um, honestly, yeah, if you guys want my recommendation, it's like this. High-end graphics card, get the Intel. Uh, Mid-range graphics card, you can save yourself some money and get the AMD. So I'm going to recommend them both cut and dry. That's my opinion on them both. Save yourself some money if you can. However, if you're going with a premium graphics card, make sure you match it with the 4-core at least. The 4-core is ample fine for a single-end graphics card. This thing will just chew. With 4 threads, if you overclock this even further, the 4.6 gigs, it'll make short work of any game. And you'll see in the benchmarks as well, this thing started to, especially at 1440p, this thing was not CPU bound in any game. So that's a good thing about the Intel. Uh, the AMD was still CPU bound at 1440p in some games, which was surprising to me as well. Anyway, that's my recommendation for you guys. I'll be bringing out the benchmarks for you guys soon, and you'll get to see the whole results cut and dry. Uh, I'll be give, recommending power um, efficiency for you guys as well, and that's another thing as well. If you live in a country with high power, like if you're paying a lot for a kilowatt hour, say like me, if you're paying like around 35 cents or 30 cents, I know you guys in Australia are paying like 29 cents a kilowatt hour, then that is another factor to consider as well because it doesn't, you, I was actually surprised the power consumption wasn't that bad, but it was still maybe an extra light bulb or so on average higher than this so I mean higher than the Intel so that's what I got down to in the conclusion anyway guys I hope you enjoyed this this is really cut and dry um, honestly I want to get through this and get on to more interesting stuff I'll get all this headphone and audio file uh, stuff to test out and I really want to get to the bottom of that too uh, so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this I will be coming back with the results really soon for you guys and as always peace out for now and I'll catch you guys soon